Okay, good evening. We'll call the meeting of the East Bridgewater Finance Committee August 17th to order at 7.04 p.m. I have, to, I have to take minutes too, don't I? Um, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. If one of us can do it. Okay, well, good. I think we'll, uh, we'll probably Sounds be okay. like a volunteer from the end. <laughs> <laughs> Until we re completely restructure. Um, all right, so just a quick run through of the agenda. Tonight we're going to be meeting um, with the residents who have submitted letters of interest to join the Finance Committee. So we'll have a schedule of four candidates. Um, after that, we'll run through our minutes, a few open items, and then we'll be able to adjourn. We'll actually, if Dave doesn't mind, we'll start five minutes early. And we got Bachelor in Paradise at eight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Timing, absolutely. <laughs> so, Dave Walsh, welcome to the table. Hi. Hi. All right. So we're going to be very, very informal about this. Okay. I know. I know you like prepped for for days. <laughs> So why don't you just make it easy and we'll just let you tell the rest of the committee a little bit about yourself and sure. your interest in joining I, the finance. I've been in town for 27 years. I was a former member of the finance committee for I believe it was six years, chairman for a while. I was on the board of selectmen for six years, involved in the sewerage feasibility study committee, you know, many different things in town. And... Um, I've been busy over the past few years, but life is slowing down. Uh, we have a new town administrator. I was fortunate enough to be part of that search committee, uh, and it's kind of reinvigorated me. It made me feel that I wanted to get back involved again because I feel the wind's an opportunity for change. Uh, so, And I've been following town meeting and everything that's been going on, and uh, I still think th things could be done a little bit better, a little, you know, and I think I bring to the table my experience in the private sector of managing budgets, uh, purchasing, et cetera. I think I bring a lot to the table. I handle a $450 million budget where I work um, that can skyrocket as high as $650 million, but I try not to do that, you see. <laughs> so uh, I think I understand some of the ins and outs of the town and the struggles that we face continuously. You know, we're in a tough situation where we're located and uh, I think it's time I really sense there is a desire for change and progress more so than in the past and uh, I'd like to see more people get involved you know there was one point in time where many committees in town were lax and the, we didn't have a lot of volunteers and over a short period of time, we did get them going and did get folks involved. And it's a tough job for a small group of four to do, so we need to expand that a little bit and work with the department heads. I'm familiar with the department heads through the years. Um, I think I have, you know, something to offer, and I'd be excited to be back and be a part of this again. Excellent. If there is one area in, I won't even say in the budget process or in the finances, in the municipal process that's kind of dogging you right now that you're thinking a lot about. Is there one particular area that you're interested in seeing more change happen? Well, the whole process, somewhat, to tell you the truth. It's um, the budget process, as I'm familiar with, is, is more of a, uh, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of across the board decisions. Sure, there is times when you need to do that, and I professed this while I was selectman and on the finance committee before. Uh, there's a time when you may need to do it, but you can't do that as a stay that course forever. You have to make adjustments for where costs are. I think we need to start looking at fixed cost. Uh, what are some of the fixed costs that are out there that people, you know, they have to pay with? And, and not to pick on any one department or any one thing, I will say for an example, would be uh, the, in, in the school department, they have a special education budget. They don't always know what that's going to be. They can forecast it in September or whatever, how it's going to be. So one year it could be, and I'm making numbers up totally, okay, one year it could be 500000 and the next year it could be $1.2 million. There's that much p potential fluctuation. Well, I would think you might want to look at this in a way that it's okay let's level fund it for a certain point because the good we have to pay it anyway right we don't want to take away from other programs if cost goes up 
So if we level funded it at say five hundred thousand, and it got the, we found out in January or whatever that it was going to be eight hundred thousand, then we have a special town meeting and fund that that deficit. Uh, that way, during the course of the year, they don't have to absorb that three hundred thousand dollars and take away from something else. But then vice versa, if you fund it at five hundred and then it's going to be three hundred, we'd be expecting the other two hundred back. So just having that open communication, I mean, that's one idea. I don't know if it will work. We actually did it two years; it worked out fairly well. Uh, just being able to have that conversation, and I think that the departments would be receptive to having some of those conversations because I think a lot of it comes from nobody's trusted anybody for years. Oh, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. How do we know you're going to do that? Because we're giving you our word, and, and we've got to be true to our word. We have to set a course and set a plan and go with it. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> there are no rights and no wrongs here. <laughs> um, I won't ask more questions. I'll let you guys poke and ask some questions. How do you, um, what's one thing that you go through? I mean, the, the budget that you manage in the private sector is very large. How do you go about organizing your budget and how can you use that as you become a liaison to departments and helping some of the larger departments? Well, I work on some forecasting. Okay. I mean, you have to take your real life actuals and project out, realistically project out, not over inflate them. I don't like the game where you say, well, I'm going to ask for 200,000 because they're only going to give me 100,000. No, we got to deal in reality and we've got to have some basis behind our forecast that we have uh, and the other part you see you're gonna get me on a rampage now okay <laughs> the other part is is every year so far what we well what the citizens see and I'm sure the Finance Committee may look at it differently is you look at what's been allocated at town meeting last year and they build off of that for the next year we should build off of actuals you know so here's the year this is what was passed at town meeting. This is what was spent in these those categories. And we could actually start working that six or seven months into the year because you would just forecast that out for the next six or seven months of the year. So we have to do some more forecasting and we have to base it a little more on reality as opposed to just what was passed at annual town meeting last year. Because you're well aware that you know during the end of the year, and this, you, it's never going to get away from it all, at town meeting, we move things from one budget line to another. Because you have to do that in the department. The school department doesn't have to do that. But that could be based off of overtime or whatever. But those are what I would call explained variances and where we have to make the adjustments. So having something based a little more in reality for actual goings on, I think, is important. Thank you. I think we see that and kind of certainly in one direction, but not always in the other direction. We always yeah. see the increases be yeah. better budgeted based on actuals, but you don't typically see it the and other some way. Some of it, like I definitely wonder if it's only I've only been on for a year, but it's like lack of um, not knowledge, but no one's ever sat down with them. It's been, a, it's been the, the process all the time, and this is the way it's been, and this has been based off of last year's town meeting right. and stuff like that. I think to sit down and educate, explain, and have a conversation, and building that trust will get us to where we need to be. So it's easier to repeat and do what you do year after year. We call as that opposed Sally in accounting. I don't know if you know that term. <laughs> What does Sally stand for? Same as last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Very rarely does. I know. <laughs> that, that could be a new one. <laughs> okay. What, what do you see as um, having obviously been paying attention for many, many years and kind of watching the evolution of kind of what's happened in the last kind of several years, what do you see as one of the biggest challenges that the Finance Committee right now is facing? Well, this is on TV, right? So we have to be careful. One of the biggest challenges is building the trust and working with the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator to set the pathway, okay? I think the conversations need to be done earlier than here's the budget time and here's what we're gonna do. We need to be soliciting information up front, talking about the direction we need to go, see where it's gonna take us, start planning now 
with some forecasting. Mm-hmm. Start planning. I'm not saying complete the budget process, but start forecasting what things are going to look like. All right, and then from there, once we determine what the revenues are, what's coming in is, and it's not a good way to put it, but kind of back into that. But let's start. Let's start working on the basis of reality. Early on, forecast out what we need, and try to figure out a way to get there. <coughs> Mm-mm. Do you have any specific questions for us? Uh, I'm, I was just very curious when I walked in here and only saw four of you. Uh, so, what is the board now? Is it is it seven? Four? It's seven. Okay. Yep. Okay. I wasn't a big advocate for downsizing it. Um, I thought that took away some potential opportunity for citizen involvement, but at that time there was also a lack of interest in getting involved. So at some point in time, I would think we may want to talk about getting back to where you were if, if, we, if we need to. Where so oh, that's our intent. Yeah. Um, so we have three. Oh, back to seven? Yeah. You mean? So, OK. I yeah. thought you meant it used to be like nine or no, something. No. Um, like well, it was nine. It uh-huh. was. Bylaws have been seven for a while. Was it? Read seven now. It reads seven. And right. I don't know the Changed it a couple of years ago at town meeting. Was it? You yeah. get up to seven, get people going, and then maybe appoint to a couple of alternative members mm-hmm. so you have an ability to yeah. fill. So right now we're looking to fill the three vacancies. Well, definitely, definitely. You need to fill the three vacancies. Yeah. Yes. That's and, so cool. um, it was tough with five. It was tough year. with five. <laughs> it was very tough with five last year. Yeah. Yeah. Very tough. Um, so yeah, that would be our desire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. Uh, you know, I think the challenges that we have ahead of us, uh, they're not that much different than they were in the past, but I just hope with some fresh outlook and some new eyes looking at things, we're able to get over some of the, I wish I had a nice acronym like Sally or something, <laughs> but it's just the old stuff. Yeah. And I think we're on the verge of a new era, mm-hmm. and uh, it'd be good to get involved and be good to make sure you fill the positions and not only on this board but on all the other boards because if people are afraid to get involved in the finance committee because they don't know what's going on there's the patriotic activity mm-hmm. committee there's the recreation committee there's a the historical committee there's enough to get involved because trust me when you get involved with one group you get involved with more you get the you get the flavor you understand people get nervous and they're scared to get involved just get involved mm-hmm. you know so well, I think you'll find, I think I can speak for us, the, the four of us, that, um, you know, and we're all relatively new, newish to the committee. There's no long term committee members. I mean, you have. Oops, sorry about that. Four? Yeah, four. Um, so, so, four, this would be my third, and this would be the second. Um, and I think we all have a similar desire mm-hmm. that new, you know, we're, we're ready for some change. And, right. you know, we've been talking quite a bit about it um, as a committee, too. So. And, and the good thing is, that, you know, I've noticed over the past few years, the department heads are pretty engaged and involved with you. So, you know, you don't have some giant hurdles. This is no, I think we all had really good relationships yeah. with our department heads last I year. Was, I, so. I think getting them to do their presentations, it was super educational, getting yeah. them taped and out to the public, I think is yeah. huge too. Yeah, and, and I think this year might be some of the background work before their presentations. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know how much of what was done, but if you do determine it, it's best to kind of change the process. And we definitely want to start earlier. Yeah. We've all, yeah. we've definitely said that. And so an interesting thing is, as we were interviewing on the town administrator side, uh, as we talked about the budget process and how to go, that was another part that philosophically what I was what was expressed in the interview uh, went along very much in the way I thought that things could be better mm-hmm. and well directed in town. So that's one of the reasons I feel a little bit more enthusiastic at this point in town time. Mm-hmm. So. Agreed. Agreed. Any other questions? Yeah, I just have one more. So um, going back to your experience in the in the private sector, do you? you tie multi-year budget forecasting into like a strategic plan of any kind? Yeah, you usually try to forecast out about five years. Uh, You do the extreme of 10, but you've got to also remember that a lot of it has to remain very flexible. Mm 
Um, it's well, just especially in healthcare. Yeah, especially in healthcare, because <laughs> tomorrow can be different than today. As a matter of fact, two things happened today. That, but anyway, uh, at one o'clock I thought I was going in one direction. Two o'clock I had to go in a different direction. But it all worked out. But you don't lose sight of your overall plan. Right. And uh, it's like it's tough to forecast. You never know what's going to happen with the economy. You try to forecast out. Uh, you get to see kind of what's going on in the state, for example. You can kind of tell. Massachusetts tends to be one of the, when there's a little bit of a recession going on or whatever, Massachusetts is one of the last ones into that. But we're also one of the last ones to recover. Um, so you, you try to plan. And that's why you have the rainy day fund. And I know people fight and argue about the rainy day fund, how much is appropriate to have in there. Well, that's something we should talk about. People get say, oh, there's a whole bunch of money in there. We need it for this. We need it for that. Oh, hold on. Let's, yeah, maybe we do, but let's figure out how much. Because I remember a time when we were almost ready to go into receivership. And if we didn't have that money, not only the cuts we made would have been done, but there would have had to be some draconian cuts, too. So we can't be foolish around that because you cannot continue to fund everyday operations out of excess money. Uh, can you... Alloc allocate wisely, yes, and that's what we have to do. We have to make sure we allocate wisely as needed. So if we build some flexibility in, like a fixed cost, an adjustable cost type program, you know, one year we may just make budget, but then something happens, and inevitably it does. I remember years planning for an 18% health care increase cost for the town. And, and I'm sitting there, and I'm in the industry, and I said, we're talking seven. What are you telling me, 18%? Well, that's what they're forecasting here and there. No, well, it was more like five. So where does that money go at the end of the day? It goes into the, it comes back into free cash because we over-budgeted in this area. Well, if this is, being cautious is one thing. Being um, overly cautious is, a, is another. Uh, I think, once again, it gets back to the reality-based, what's really happening. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we have to go out and we have to find out what the reality is. We have to take that advice from folks. You know, if somebody's sitting there saying, no, I'm in the industry, it's only going to be this, it's not going to be 18%, well, that would warrant to look at it a little bit more. Uh, and then if something absurd happens and halfway through the year we, gotta, we have to fund it, then we fund it. But if it's extra, it comes back. And we, we need to prepare as we track along and things are coming back. That's when we need to prepare for those adjustable costs for the next year. You know, so you've, you've got to plan on being able to carry your head forward and also backtrack. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I explained that well, but I got it going here. So. <laughs> Good by me. Thank yep. you. Yeah. Good. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank from your experience before on Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, what is one thing you would do differently that you did before? Differently? Well, that's hard because I was on the Board of Selectmen too, right? Um, so let's, I guess, let's highlight FinCom. I would have more in, from, now I don't know what it was like now recently, but more engagement with the planning of the direction with the Board of Selectmen. And not only with the Board, but with the Town Administrator more of a collaborative effort as opposed to being told this is what you're going to do. And I, you'd also have to want to be engaged if we're talking about fixed costs and all these other things. We have to be engaged and all understand the direction together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, because ultimately the Board of Selectmen are the ones in charge. They're the ones who set we the have tone. To be, we have to be rowing in right. the same direction. And, and the FinCom is an advisory board to the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. So we, you can make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, and they can change it and not take it or whatever. Uh, and that's why the collaboration is very, very important. Because you have to be sending the same unified message, too. Mm -hmm. And you have to be truthful about the situation and the potential outcomes. Because when you, you want to make a well-informed decision, if there's bad news, you don't sugarcoat it. You know, and if there's good news, you tell them the truth. You don't downplay it. So. I don't think of you as a sugarcoater. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I try. Very transparent. That's 
what it's about. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's how you yeah. gotta you just gotta do it because you just have to. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Any other questions? No. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Right. Appreciate your thanks. time. Thank you. I could have brought some because I made some for Matthews. Oh, for my mother. I could make some baklava. Well, she make some oh. could could make some baklava. Bring that. But then you'll be have sticky fingers on your paper. I'll bring wet wipes. Everything. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. To have us introduce ourselves. I thought of that. Time around, I but like, I think we all can. So you all know one another. So. <laughs> <laughs> fine. We all know each other. Um, so Kevin, want go ahead and start. Hi, I'm Crystal Hudson. Hi, Crystal. Melanie Dean, nice to meet you. And likewise, uh, Laura Sebastian. Dan Pika. Hey, Dan. And likewise, hey, absolutely. And our new town administrator, Brian Noble. Hi, sir. How are you? Is in the Good audience. Good to meet Thank you. you. All right. Well, we'll start by telling you we're very informal. Even though we are being taped, we're very informal uh, conversation. Don't like to make it any more than this. <laughs> um, why don't you um, start off by telling the committee a little bit about yourself and the reason why you've um, expressed an interest in joining the finance committee? Um, sure, I can add. I balance my own checkbook. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a rarity. I was going to say few and far between. I'm, I'm a still to the penny kind of girl. Me too. Okay. <laughs> No, I, I um, uh, by trade, I'm an attorney. Uh, I have an office in Randolph. I lived in Randolph for most of my life up until uh, four years ago, 2015, we moved to East Bridgewater. Um, part of what I did, I was involved in town meeting in Randolph for many moons. Um, and at one point in time, uh, when the longtime town moderator uh, moved away from town, I actually ran and was elected uh, as the town moderator. So I served in that capacity for 10 years until um, the town government changed in Randolph, and at which time I lost my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the better for Randolph in terms of the, the form of government, for sure. Um, but, um, you know, I've always, I've always had uh, found an interest and a love, you know, for, for town government and politics and whatever. Um, so uh, during the time that I was uh, the town moderator, I was actually the appointing authority for the finance committee in Randolph. So um, I got to know a little bit of the the workings of that, having you know, sat in on different meetings that they had, and so forth, um, and uh, hopefully making a couple of uh, good appointments to the to the crowd as, as uh, over the years. There were some long timers, and then some some new faces that I brought on board, which you know I think you know, it, was, it was a good uh, good group. Um, but obviously, I appreciate appreciate uh, appreciated the role that they have, uh, finance committee has in the town. Um, I was recently, uh, you know, I. I a couple of years here, finding my way around a little bit. Fifty years in Randolph, you know, you sort of know everything and everybody, you know, and, and uh, you know, go to the supermarket. Ah, oh, yeah, you're doing whatever. East Bridgewater, not the same. But trying to trying mm -hmm. to get there a little bit. Because we don't have a supermarket. Well, yeah. <laughs> part of it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, for sure, you know, I, I kind of got the bug again to try to do something in, in the town, and I was recently appointed as an alt, uh, associate member of the planning board, um, and you know, which is which is fine, uh, and I'm enjoying that. Uh, part of the work that I do uh, as an attorney is, is real estate law related and stop municipal law, real estate law. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a natural fit for me. I represent clients all the time before planning boards in other communities and uh, whatever. So that worked out well. Um, but, uh, you know, again, we have some time. The kids are grown. They're out of the house. Uh, so um, I've certainly got some, some opportunity to, to contribute. And I always like to contribute to the community. So sort of where I'm at. Excellent. And so in Randolph, yes, obviously, big, bigger town, substantial, yes. substantially yeah, larger. Sure. Yeah. Um, and and it, with your interactions with the finance committee sp specifically, I guess, but in general, what did you see were some of the major challenges um, that you helped work through um, scenarios in Randolph that would kind of help transfer over to East Bridgewater? I mean, I think that uh, over the course of time, you know, we tried to just make it a more efficient process. We, uh, as part of the, the process through town meeting, we went to a zero-sum budget, uh, whereas when I started, it was always sort of everybody coming in and, and uh, you know, well, well, we want this, but we're not going to tell you where we're going to find the money to pay for it, you know? So, uh, you know, that, that was a big improvement, and that really helped to streamline, uh, you know, not only town meeting, but the finance committee deliberations as well. Um, I think, you know, the other part of it was that, again, we, we had some old-timers, if you will, who, who had a very good sense of the town and, and of their responsibility, but at the same time brought in some, some fresh blood. And, um, you know, I thought that was important as well, just to, to prioritize different things. Um, and over the course of time, you know, both in terms of um, some of the, 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 the projects that were undertaken and, and over, not overseen, but uh, reported favorably by the Finance Committee and supported by the Finance mm -hmm. Committee. Um, you know, we had some challenges too. I mean, during the years, uh, uh, part of the time, the first, oh gosh, third or fourth year in that period, uh, early 2000s, I mean, Randolph was, was having a real struggle, you know, with money, as many communities did. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, that was, that was part of it, too, to just try to prioritize things and to, to get people into the right place as far as what the community priorities were and sort of should be, um, and, and, you know, kind of get, bring people together in that sense, um, and, uh, you know, toward a common goal, so. Mm -hmm. I think all towns have I the same. <laughs> 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 no question. Nobody has yeah. unique yeah. problems. Nope. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, exactly. No. Yeah. And that's so what I say, Randolph, you know, I think from the, the, the perspective of, uh, you know, management, uh, you know, it was a good thing for them to go over to a town manager because the town meeting form of government, at least the way that it was running, um, you know, was not, was not uh, an efficient one for the town. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with the, the challenges that it had uh, at that time. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, but East Bridgewater seems to be a, you know, a good, uh, good community in terms of everything that I've seen as far as uh, processes and whatever. I mean, everybody that I've interacted with in town hall has been good and, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'll tell you that um, from a, you know, from a new blood perspective, I think we have a very relatively young um, board really here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've had a, um, some transition over the last couple of years, which is why we have some seats available, but um, four year, uh, going on four years, going on three years, and going on second year. Wow, okay. Um, wow. So, and, and obviously, <laughs> brand spanking Brando. new, yes, <laughs> week, week two, yeah. Yeah. there was a town administrator. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's certainly, w we're in a, you know, a, definitely a changing period, sure. for, yeah. which is, I think, is a good thing, but I'll stop my questions and you guys can jump in. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> so, were you, were you able to watch like any of our meetings or anything, or familiar with our process? I have not actually okay. watched any of your meetings. Okay. Uh, I, I've actually uh, focused more on uh, the other, some of the other departments in the town, and in, in, in watching stuff. Um, well, if you have trouble sleeping, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we really can't hold that against you. <laughs> I was um, one of the things that we tr that we do, I think, one of the biggest roles that we play is being a liaison to different departments sure. yep. um, and trying to help them navigate through the budget process and how they can 
improve the way that they budget or look at it differently or present it differently so that it's more transparent. Are there any? Do you have a, t a particular member who relates to a particular department, or is I mean that's the way it was done in Randolph? Yeah. You know, you sometimes too, depending, depending on the size of the department. Yeah. Sure. I was just going to ask, based on your background in Randolph, is there one or two departments that maybe you had more experience with that you thought you might be able to lend some credence to or to help them? Yeah, I mean, I I actually um, was a longtime member of the trustees at the library, so I have a, a you know a, a an affinity for libraries. <laughs> uh, <quite honestly. laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes that was a challenge because that was one of those departments that sometimes people didn't necessarily support to the extent that I thought they should be supported. Um, and then, you know, the other one that uh, I, just because I knew um, uh, police and fire chiefs, I actually, uh, up there, I had, you know, a lot of interaction mm -hmm. with them, uh, just personal as well as, you know, through the, through the, the, the position. Have you used our library here? Library I've been in a couple of times. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, again, I think it's uh, it, it's funny because we hired a new director who five years ago maybe, mm -hmm. and one of the applicants was your former director, I think, okay. as I recall. Oh, okay. So yeah, um, so that's actually my first introduction to the East Bridgewater Library back then. <laughs> How many members did Randolph have? I'm just curious we don't on their finance committee. Uh, was it seven or nine? Um, nine, yeah, three, th three, three years, yeah, nine, nine, nine total. Do you have any questions um, for us about about the way we operate, about our logistics, about our processes? Um, just in terms of how many members you have and, uh, you know, you, it, it seems like, you know, the, the informality is, is, is nice in the sense that's kind of what I was used to with the group that we had uh, in, in, in Randolph. So, I mean, I think that favors the process, mm -hmm. I mean, when you can be that way and just not be so you know, stilted <laughs> and formal about well, it. Well, as somebody reminded me at a meeting last night, uh -huh. um, we need to make it fun too. Oh, we're, absolutely. We're, we're volunteering yep. our time and there's no and, question and we, about that. We are pretty fun group. Uh, <laughs> um, but we have seven members um, to the committee. We're I trying said, to get seven. We're, we're going to get back to seven members. <laughs> um, uh, we did five. We think we, we lost a couple midstream last year. Oh, really? That's hard. Um, for different reasons, so we did it with five, which was a little bit of a struggle. Sure. You know, it's a it's a huge commitment. So we're definitely looking to have a full complement of seven <laughs> members. Um, God willing. <laughs> um, but we our process is um, you know again we try to keep it as informal and um, again as we go. Um, it does get a little obviously labor intensive as we get closer to the budget season. Um, obviously, the more members we have makes the load a little lighter when dealing with our um, liaison with our departments. Um, we do a lot of pre-meetings with them in preparation for their, they then do presentations to the committee. Um, gives us an opportunity, um, now that we're taping them, uh, some of the bigger departments will do a full presentation with PowerPoint, so it's really educational. Um, we really encourage them to do it because, again, it's another uh, source of education back out to the citizens of the town, so it's another opportunity. Um, so again, we, we encourage them to use the platform to no, get to get information out as well um, and to learn about the department. But um, yeah, we typically, you know, we'll, we'll start off slow, um, uh, slower, probably not that slow this year, yeah. um, with our meetings um, every other week, once, a, you know, every other week probably. Um, and then we sometimes get into crunch time, and we'll m potentially even be uh, once a week, depending on mm. how we're doing in the process um, as we get closer. Typical what, uh, yeah. what they did up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then your liaison meetings are kind of on an as-needed basis. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And kind of working with their schedules. Yeah. 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 We, did, um, we would like this year to start the budget process a little earlier than we did last year, so I think our hopes are, hope, you know, that we won't have as many crunched meetings, mm -hmm. but Obviously, and never you know, we wait and see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, that's, yeah, try as you might. Yep, but, but and maybe you know, get some time limits on some of the department presentations because yes, you know. there were some late nights. <laughs> <laughs> we gave them an opportunity and they took it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it was it was all incredibly um, 
well received and educational. Definitely. Any other questions for us that you have? No, that? no. I mean, I think, as I say, I, the experience that I've had, I mean, gives me an idea what you guys are about and you know what you what you're doing and, and that whole thing. So I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's as I say, I just value the opportunity to to try to give something back, and I, I appreciate the role that you guys have, and um, you know, look forward would look forward to. You're, you're coming. Yeah. You're approaching it with eyes wide open. Too. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Eyes for wide sure. open. I'm not so sure. I can say the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Well, yeah. wonderful. Any other questions or? I don't think so. No. Thank you very much. Yeah, good. Thank, thank you. you. Good very to meet much. you all. Nice to meet you. Thanks right. very much yeah. for coming My in. My pleasure. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Nice to meet you, sir. Take care. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible That's drive. a ride. You can go around the city. 26 miles, and it takes two oh, hours. Um, <laughs> we do um, the Audit Fest Salem State, um, and we've started doing a lot of, I'm not on that job, but uh, we've started to do a lot of it, like in-house and electronically, because, because it's their commutes are just mm. insane. insane. Are you going to go around the city? Are you going to go through it? Whatever the GPS. Yeah, whatever's right, whatever. like the lesser so evil. Uh, yeah. Magic evil. <laughs> yeah. What's he gonna say today? I, <laughs> right. yeah. I, I had to take uh, it's Zoe up to a con. Um, I had to pick her up at a concert up in Newburyport, mm. and then we were doing Salem on the way back. And I'm like driving, and I'm driving. I'd and be like, so tired. I'm like, where am I? <laughs> right? Am I, yeah. am I in Maine? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. I was yeah. just like, because I'm in New Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. literally. We may want to take a pause or time out for a few minutes. We'll take an informal recess until our next guest shows up. Let me get you a gavel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't give me any more power. <laughs>
you. All right, Dan Pico. Hi. Nice to, nice to meet you. And this is our new town administrator, Brian Noble. Okay. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. Digital Flaherty. So, the resume that thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank have you. that you know, highlights thank you. a little bit of my background. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Where would you like me to sit? Um, either one of these two chairs is fine. Okay. Congratulations on your recent degree. Oh, thank you. It was kind of long overdue. Oh, awesome. My alma mater. Mine too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I actually got my undergrad and my graduate from Bridgewater. Me Did too. you? Yep. yep. In Same. business. So. In business, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I was uncertain where I wanted to go. As my resume will point out, I, um, I was a president business agent of a, a local union here in Brockton. I did that for four terms, so 12 years. And I had, however you want to look at it, my wife thinks it was a you know, it was a godsend that uh, I got defeated in uh, an election. <laughs> <laughs> and I think so, too. And I said, well, one door closes, I'm going to open up another door. So I decided to continue my education. Mm -hmm. And I did. I enrolled back into Massasoit, and I went from there. I took a business class. I liked that. I did well. Wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, whether business or liberal arts, mm -hmm. did well, like I said, in my business class, and uh, just took off from there. So my, uh, my resume shows a minor in um, finance. I'm actually, although I can't declare a major because I already graduated with a major, <laughs> two concentrations <laughs> in, in management, but I was six credits shy. What I wanted to do, because you don't know what life is going to deal you, I wanted to get my degree before, you know, something was say to happen. Nothing, you know, I mean, I'm not sick or anything like that, so I don't want you to. Uh, so no pity votes. No pity votes. No, 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 no. But you just don't know what life is going to deal you. And I, I you know, I, I spent six years to get my undergraduate, and I just, I initially I had plans to graduate try at um, 2017, then I meant 2018. And what happens is uh, when you're working full time, it's not easy. I tried taking three classes. And so it's, you know, if you want to maintain a good GPA, you know, something's got to give. So I said, well, some of the professors over there, the dean of uh, the department says, Rich, just get the hell out of here. <laughs> get your degree and forget about the other classes. You have enough credits, just get your degree. And then you can always come back. So next April, I'm taking a class now, repeating, um, because I had three classes last semester. So one class always has to fail, especially if you're trying to mm -hmm. work full time. Um, so I'm repeating that now. And then in the fall, I mean in the spring, um, a class, another class that I have to take, um, I withdrew from because something has to give, mm -hmm. you know, I tried. And it's more of a, a difficult, uh, futures and options, so you have to understand that whole type of market. You gotta do a lot of reading and research, and so, as I told my professor, I said, I don't want a sympathetic grade. I said, I wanna earn it, so, you know, I'll repeat it, I'll come back, uh, you know, I have enough credits, I had 140 credits, so. That's, that's where Professor Seventy yep. still teaching accounting over oh, there. She passed away. <gasps> she she oh, did, did like two, yeah. two or three years ago. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You would have had her if you. <laughs> well, I didn't do accounting. Um, it was more finance. I had the finance classes. I had Professor Donovan. There was um, most of them are adjunct. I had some adjunct yep. uh, professors that have worked in the industry, and that the college hires. I think. Nothing to get a, a against academics, um, but I think you know practical experience. Mm -hmm. People who've been, mm -hmm. you, you can learn a lot more. Mm -hmm. And at least with me, that I've, I've learned a lot more, especially in business with people who have have the application that, sure. that know. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're, um, why you're interested in joining the finance committee? 
Well, um, when I moved to East Bridgewater 32 years ago, I, I, I always wanted to uh, be involved in, in town government, get interested. I was interested in, um, you know, doing something with the community here. So I waited a couple of years and I got elected uh, to the planning board. So and I served there for ten and a half years on the planning board. And then I, um, I left midterm and I got elected to be the president of the bus drivers union over in Brockton. So um, I knew that, um, you know, there could be some interference with attending meetings you know, with the uh, planning board, and I said, well, you know, I'm just gonna, I'll just resign, and I, and I resigned, uh, you know, with no qualms, just so I could do that particular mm -hmm. uh, function, you know, where, where I work, so. Um, and then I still wanted to be, I was still interested in serving the town, so uh, an opening came uh, available on the Oak Only Planning Council. So having the background here, you know, with the planning board, um, I just figured I can continue it on mm -hmm. and do it more of a, a regional. And I, and I was on that committee for 19 years. During that time, I got on the JTC, the Joint Transportation Committee, because my background primarily is in public transportation. The JTC handles issues from infrastructure roadways as well as public transportation, and I had some experience uh, along there. I was on some committees, you know, with the union. There was one on public transportation, the Beyond Boston Study Committee. I got on that and, and, and worked with um, administrators of different transit authorities. You know, be, because they were going through a, transi a transition period, they were typically relying on um, governor's budget, mm -hmm. and when I became the president of the union, it was always a line item, and it, public transportation was underfunded. The administrators knew it, the government knew it, so they kind of revamped things. I got on the committee representing um, labor, and you know, constituents are, are right, the writing public. So I, I did that for a while, and I did some lobbying in Washington D.C. and. Um, and locally, uh, in the state house, for an increase in um, funds for public transportation. So I spent quite a bit of time during my presidency uh, with the union doing that. So I've always had an interest of um, doing something. I knew that there was an opening um, on the finance committee, and when I did have time, you know, I'd go to the um, the town meetings. And I says, well, that seems like a, an interesting uh, committee to be on, you know, making decisions on, you know, how the taxpayers are going to uh, live, you know, uh, you know, what, you know, what uh, a committee feels is important for, for the town and how it can progress. Um, my father, he was uh, the chairman of the Board of Assessors in the city of Brockton. And when Proposition Two and a Half uh, came into effect, he kind of, he, he fell into that and he understood Proposition Two and a Half, you know, much better than the mayors. So he was a, before they had a, a financial person, he, fi he, he did the, uh, advised the mayors on you know, the Proposition Two and a Half, the cherry sheet. So he knew a lot of the municipal financing. So I kind of take after, after that. My father's degree was not in finance or accounting, although he knew that. He was very good in math and he understood that. So I, I kind of follow in his footsteps that way. I've been here for 32 years. I plan on staying here until the, they plant me across the street. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> or spread my ashes in the backyard or whatever, however, it, you know. Um, and I like the town. I like the town. I've always liked uh, being involved and, in, you know, participating in, in groups, uh, you know, working together collaboratively to, you know, for a better, to the better end, you mm -hmm. know, if, 
if that sounds right, that uh, I've always found even in school working with uh, teams, I may have a different idea or share the same idea. And what I've found, uh, you know, I've been able to, you know, through different boards that I've sat on is be able to um, offer my opinion. Um, some of it, you know, people welcome, some they don't. I don't look to antagonize people, but um, j just for instance, where, you know, I drive a bus for a living over in Brockton, I know pretty much about everything that needs to be done as far as are improving public transportation because I deliver it every day for people and I look at what they, their needs are and I can see it, I see the transformations and all that. But it takes money. <laughs> so, you know, I offer a voice that way that uh, people, they may understand it, but because funding is very uh, tight, um, that they say, well, we, we can't do that. Or some just say, well, we can't do that because it's not our idea. So, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I'd, I'd like to serve. You know, I have a, a, a keen interest in uh, the political process. You know, in town. So today, the, I'm, I, I'm I'm very red today, and it's not because I have high blood pressure. I was holding signs for a good friend of mine over in Brockton who's running for mayor, <laughs> and I forgot to put sunscreen on. So. Oh. A little, a little late season tan is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the reason why I was out since seven o'clock this morning. Hopefully, signs for a good friend of mine. So, good news. Yeah. So, in and observing kind of what's been happening with the town and with the finances, with the budget process, you go to town meeting, you kind of see, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Um, what do you see as some of the major challenges that we're facing, uh, that the town is facing, or that the committee and the departments are facing right now? Um, well, I think the school budget, I, I believe that's somewhere around $22 million, and I believe any, in any community, school takes up a, a, a great deal of the budget. I know that Proposition 2.5, you have to live under that constraint, so you can't raise your tax levy more than 2.5%. I think like any community, East Bridgewater is, is no different, that you rely on state funds, and typically I, it's a cherry sheet. It may not be what you know you anticipate, so you have to make some, some cuts in, in certain areas, or you have to get together with uh, the, the different department heads and um, you know, come to some sort of a compromise in, you know, how much money can be expended or how, how they can increase their budget or, you know, they may have to decrease it. I know that contractual obligations are sometimes hard to meet. So, uh, and, and I used to do that where, you know, where I work uh, currently uh, and, you know, for 12 years, you know, I knew the constraints, I knew what the authority had to work with, um, although it wasn't as transparent as it is today. But I do, I, I knew that my members needed a certain level of benefits, you know, to care for their families. So, mm -hmm. you know, health care was the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. You can't control health care costs because, you know, the insurance companies, depending on your exposure, your risk, um, you know, they're going to increase premiums. So that's, that's a big uh, challenge that mm -hmm. the towns have to, uh, or a city they have to go through is the uh, health care. I think that um, pooling resources is an avenue to perhaps control some of that, that cost. Now, I'm not sure at the town of East Bridgewater if they're part of the, the county plan. Some communities go under the Plymouth County plan. Um, the okay. GIC, right? Is the GIC, the state? The health insurance. Yeah. yeah. Some, some employees might not like that because I get, think they get uh, restricted, you know, and who they can see, or there's higher co-pays, higher deductibles, they may. Um, you know, y you have a challenge with um, the labor force. You might have a challenge with uh, meeting, you know, when it comes time to nego renegotiate contracts, whether it's the, the school department, the police, the fire. Uh, can be challenged. <coughs> Everybody wants to be able to, 
you know, make enough money to provide for their family, educate their children. So I think um, there has to be, I don't think, I believe, you have, you have to have a certain rapport. You have to, be, you have, to have a level of trust between yourselves or the committee, the board of selectmen, and the different department heads. So, you know, in these times, you know, unless there's a, a golden parachute out there, <laughs> you know, it's tough. And I think some of the financial obligations with the, um, the pension plan with public pensions, sometimes there has to at some point, there'd have to be a discussion on that and how, going forward, how that's going to be sustained. Places like uh, out in California, uh, typically they're having a problem with uh, the public pension system. I, I did a, a paper in a risk management class that I had down at uh, Bridgewater uh, last summer on the viability of um, the public pension system, and I did a lot of research through the library down there, as well as um, what I found online. Mm -hmm. And I never found an article that, you know, the public pension uh, system can be sustained going forward. There was a lot of negative um, comments, you know, related to the public pension system viability. I think it can be sustained for a certain period of time, but I think at some point there's going to be a discussion, you know, how are we going to fund this, you know, 30 years from now? Is it going to be somebody else's responsibility? I just think that there has to be a discussion between people today and people who are, have, um, you know, department heads now, you know, what, what are we going to do, you know, going forward for the next generation? <clears throat> People aren't going to be able to depend on Social Security. I may get it. I, I should, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably another two years, two and a half years, I'm going <laughs> to get it before it runs out. <laughs> you know, I was going to wait until I was 70. I said, no, I'm not going to wait. Don't chance it. Yeah, I'm not going to take a chance because who knows. So I think that that's something that, you know, that's going to be a challenge. There are promises that are made, promises that have to be kept. But, you know, for, for maybe at some point for new hires, they have to, some, somebody, is, is some sort of a dis discussion, a dialogue has to take place in, in that respect, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of communities are doing that now, a lot of sure. towns and cities. So. Yeah. All right, so in interest of time, um, we have to schedule any questions that we'd like to ask. You're good, you're good. Yeah, good. Do you have any questions for the committee? Anything no, logistics no, I, or? No, I mean, I, I live right around the corner. It takes me a minute and a half, two minutes. I'm right over on Hobart Street. So I know, you know, during the budget time, uh, before town meeting, you meet often. Mm -hmm. Yes, my, my My work schedule, I go to work. I'm up at 4.30. I'm at work at 5.30. I'm done at 1.30. I don't take too much overtime where I work. I do a second job, and it's... I drive a um, limousine. Not the limos, purpose, but I do airport runs. Mm -hmm. I, doing that just so I can pay off my college debt. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not on a particular schedule. If I'm available, yep. I'll take it. If not, I'll, yep. you know. We try to stay pretty consistent with our meetings. Yeah. Um, we tend to, Tuesday tends to be kind of the night. Yeah, um, yeah generally I don't do anything until Fridays, Sundays. Seems to we don't be meet on this. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I draw seems the to line. be the busiest time. I draw time. the line. Yeah. Maybe Monday, maybe yeah. Monday. Yeah. But yeah. Thursdays yeah. I might get called, you know, Thursday, Friday. So, yeah. you know, I, I adjust my schedule so that. Okay, great. But I'd like to help out if, you know, if you yep. feel that I have enough uh, experience and, um, you know, what I've done, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know throughout my, my career, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be glad to to sit and help with you. If you have any questions, you feel free to call me. And, I, you know, if there's something you, you have an idea of or would like further clarification as you're going sure. through the resume, Great. You know, I'd be glad to answer it. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Thank Wonderful. Well, much. thanks so much thank for coming so in. Much. Thank, thank you. Thanks for your time. All right. Well, it. Thank you. My knees are sore from I, standing I, all yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Nice Bye. to meet same, you. Same here. Nice Good to meet you. Good luck with Have her. a great night. The rest of your classes, too. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're going to be easy. I'm going to take one of the semesters. If, 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 if I don't get an A in any one of them, 
There's something wrong. <laughs> 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 you know, I try to maintain a, a you know decent GPA. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. it's a good school. I like that. Uh, yeah, it's a great like school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye bye. You can see the memory stand. There you go. Oh, check it out. Hudson. Hi, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Hi, Melanie Dean. Nice yeah. to meet you. Oh, now I feel like I'm sorry about that. Well, Dan was standing waiting for it, so I felt. <laughs> yeah. Met me in the hall. Yeah, yeah nice, nice to meet you. And this is our new town administrator, Brian Noble. Brian, this Hi, is Mr. Joe Noble, Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. My pleasure. So we're pretty informal, casual conversation. Um, but why don't we just have you start off by letting the committee know a little bit about yourself and why you're in interested in joining the Finance Committee. Sure. Um, so Joe Conley, lived here about 10 years. Uh, live over in St. Mark Ave. Uh, wife Isabel, two sons, Marcus and Andrew, in the EB Public Schools. Uh, 8 and 11, so they're kind of in the middle. Uh, oh, I have an 8 and 11 year old. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my kids. <laughs> My husband teaches there, so. Oh, really? <laughs> well, well, okay. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, just saw this, that they need, you guys needed help or they're looking for volunteers. So uh, I have some time. I, basically what I do for work, uh, I've been at NIT for about 30 years, pretty much since I got out of college at Northeastern. Um, and now I work for a company called Accenture, which used to be like Arthur Anderson Accounting back in the day. And um, we do IT projects. So I do, uh, I do travel sometimes. Um, not as much as uh, used to be, but um, occasionally a client will say, hey, get on a plane, get in now. So um, not around all the time, but I do work from home a lot. So I'm like around town, um, you know, do a lot of the days. I don't, I don't like drive to Boston or whatever. Um, have some experience, not a lot. Just want to kind of learn more, I guess, about what you guys do here and, you know, the government and the town itself. Um, you know, my kids and my family's in the town, so I figured I should kind of give something back to it. Um, in terms of experience, I'm not an accountant, but uh, I did work at the uh, Budget Bureau up at the State House in the A&F group for a while back when uh, Mike Dukakis was running for, for, uh, go for president, way back then, like late 80s. Uh, so I kind of get the idea of budgets and, you know, paying for things, and the government is a little different than um, uh, generally accepted accounting principles, so. Well, we only have one accountant here with us, so. <laughs> Keeps everybody honest? Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's exactly yeah, where we have it around. Right. No. Yeah. yeah, no, it can be hard. I mean, we deal with that all the time, different clients, different accounting systems, what's mm -hmm. what, right? So mm -hmm. kind of get that. So I'm good at systems, um, you know, uh, and thought maybe I could help out with the town. You know? I don't, really don't know a lot about what you all do here. I know finance, so I, money comes in, money goes out. <laughs> it does. Uh, it goes out really <laughs> fast <laughs> and comes in really <laughs> slow. Right. A lot of people crying on both ends. Uh, so... Yeah, you pretty uh, much nailed it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure it's, yeah. you know, you try to keep it simple, but things tend yeah. to get more complex on their own. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if I can help, I'm happy to uh, do whatever you guys need to do. Have you um, attended town meeting? Have you been watching any of, of, of the town meetings that are the yeah. goings on? Yeah, I go to the town meeting. So, yeah. uh, you know, not really a towny per se, but I would like to get more into it. So mm -hmm. I thought this might be a good way to be useful and not just sit there and... <laughs> you know, be on the sidelines. Um, but, yep. uh, you know, I'm not, like, like into it, like, on a full-time basis. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't either yeah. two years ago. <laughs> right. yeah, it yeah. takes yeah. a lot. I mean, I imagine it takes a lot of time, right? I think the, what's the budget, 30, 40 million dollars? I forget the exact number, but it was right around there. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll do a little quick run-through of kind of our process. Sure. So you, um, so you kind of know what, 
what you're getting into. So basically, we ultimately run on a board of seven members. So we're um, we're looking oh. to bring in three additional members um, through attrition, yeah. um, and then we start the process pretty much right around this time of year. Um, we start meeting. Um, we have liaisons. We appoint uh, different members liaisons to the different town departments. Mm -hmm. um, those liaisons are working uh, not only with the departments to help kind of. Most of the departments have the budget process. Right. They know better than anybody. But there's always the back and forth and the questions and the and you get to go in and meet with them and have kind of a deeper dive oh. um, to get educated. And then what, once we kind of have the schedules and all of that done. We asked the departments to come in and do a presentation to us, and that's something we've actually um, improved that part of the process, I'd oh, say, in the last couple of years. Oh. Um, and especially now that we're having our meetings taped, it's oh. an opportunity for them to kind of really, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an opportunity for them to really kind of, um, you know, promote the work they do and right. explain the work they yeah. do and, and not only in the context of the budget, but what's kind of behind it, what's driving all yeah. of that. Um, we found those to be incredibly, it's, it's, for somebody who wants to learn, it's I found it to be probably the most educational part. Yes. A of lot it of it's is really eye opening. It you is. you yeah. hear it and it's not things that just on a day to day basis you would have put together on your own. Yeah. 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 So. so if you want to learn more about the town, boy, this is <laughs> kind of the great way to do it. Yeah. Um, and then so we start working obviously closely with the board of selectmen with the town administrator mm -hmm. um, to to kind of create and work through the budget process. So yeah. again we, we meet probably I, I think we, I can't remember, like every other week pretty much, mm -hmm. probably, you know, give or take with some flexibility yep. um, as we get closer. Um, Just more meetings. It, yeah. You know, it, it can wear up to, you know, I think once we've done two meetings in one week, but usually it's every week leading up to town yeah, meeting. Like good pace. You know, and there's an occasional ad hoc meeting that we need to kind of throw in there. But for the most part, um, we try to meet pretty consistently mm -hmm. and, you know. Like I said, we get into it. And, and then you have your thought. side meetings with, yeah. with your department heads. So if you're assigned to the library, you might go meet with the library sure. once or twice before the process starts. Okay. Um, so it, like I said, it's pretty, uh, it's very eye-opening. It's, it's, it's a wonderful education yeah. Um, yeah. into kind of the very inner workings yeah. of every single part <laughs> of the town. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, that's the fun, I think that's the fun part too, yeah. getting, getting to know everybody and, right. and what it is everybody does. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about our process and how we do it. How does it work with the, uh, I guess, with the selectmen, right? Do they, they kind of have the final approval? Yep. So like final screen says, yeah, here's, yep. here's what we think is a good budget. And you guys, they go up or down or they yep. come back? So we work hand in hand with the town administrator. We at basically ultimately come back with a balanced budget. And we're a recommend, recommending committee. So we recommend that budget to the board of selectmen. But, yes, ultimately they're the ones who are, I'm kind of putting that th you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, that final stamp, um, then gets approved, put on the warrant, and we go to town meeting. Oh, and then we play the game again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so the process is, is um, it's a good process. It's been going for a while, right? I mean, it has been. Kinda it probably gets little tweaks, but it's probably the same as it was. Well, I, and then we, as we talked about, you know, from a longevity perspective, you know, uh, the town's gone through some transition over the last couple oh, of sure years, and, and even last week, two weeks ago. <laughs> um, and this board is a relatively young board. Um, Crystal's going into her fourth year. I'm going into my third, I think I said, and, yep. and, and the second. Yep. Um, and then we'll have three new members. Brian's on week two. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's um, you know it's it's a new it's a new kind of time and yeah. you know we're looking at everything with open eyes not stuck in our ways, our ways. Um, yeah, we, we don't have any ways fresh ideas we at it. We do. everything's yeah. about new bed habits. we're gonna yeah. do <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um, so you know it, it's kind yeah. of an exciting time yep at the same yeah, we time. hear that with a lot of our clients who do a lot of digital transformations getting stuff on the web you know changing. Yep. They want to change, you know, some of the business processes. People want to get through the web, right? So they can do it in their pajamas and mm -hmm. whatever the business yeah. is. That's so you set up problem. new well, processes. You're not IT audit or anything no, like that. No, I don't really do IT auditing. It's uh, I do more of the infrastructure, but okay. I work a lot with the guys who will like put the stuff in the Amazon Cloud or Google Cloud. Okay. You know, or Interesting. Do a lot, a lot of Microsoft Cloud, right. and then we go in with them and try to, you know, say, hey. You know, you're doing it this way. We have another client who does it this way. Mm -hmm. and we can save some money. And they're like, ooh, yeah, we like to save money. So, so we like to do that with towns. Oh, wait a minute. So and so's <laughs> doing that. <What's> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try to, Same. Know, share new ideas, right? Yeah. And, uh, cross pollinate, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good, good. No? 
変えないでや。<笑><笑><笑> Any interview from you guys? <laughs> Okay, so what I would think what I will ask is that、um, everybody can kind of, we have three seats to fill, we have four candidates.、Um, so if everybody wants to maybe just、um, email me your rank order of the candidates, and then we'll take those, we'll enumerate those and take the top three. And those will be our recommendations to the board of selectmen. Do you have a, when would you like as a s a p I mean, like, can you do it tonight when you get home? <laughs> I mean, if we could do it、yeah. ideally in the next 48 hours,、okay. that would be、yes. very good.、Um, I'd like to wrap up the week. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs>、um, Brian, when is the next is the next board meeting Monday night? The、mm -hmm. This coming Monday? Yes.、Um, So、What would my time frame, my deadline be for getting the board? 48 hours. 48 hours before Monday, so it would have to be Thursday by Thursday. five. Okay, so tomorrow you want them? Yeah.、Okay. So yeah. if I can get them、yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, that doesn't seem impossible. Thursday by、yeah. 4:30. Yeah. If I can get them tomorrow,、okay. I will turn a letter around tomorrow,、okay. um, and then we can potentially get appointments.、Mm. Do I need to contact the folks before that? Well, <coughs> what's the process with the first like? The first like, we may want to interview them. So, I think at this point. They haven't before. <laughs> But okay. Yeah.、Well. Okay. I don't know. Maybe they will. No. No, they won't.、Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's put it on the agenda. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Because、yeah, I don't think I found out until it was after the board. Yes. When, when you were watching the appointment.、Yeah. When you were watching the show. When you were watching the show. Yeah. You find out. And you were like, woohoo! <laughs> they said my name. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> I'd be polite to tell them which ones you're going to recommend forward. And the unfortunate fourth person, <clears throat> you、yeah. know, got to be honest. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. But there、so. are plenty of other committees looking for members. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And then what? Let me see. No. What did you said something about an associate member? But we are. Yeah. No,、nope, it doesn't. Yeah.、Okay. So if everybody just wants to get me those by tomorrow,、yep. I'll turn that information around ASAP by the end of the day tomorrow. Awesome.、Um, and then we can start planning for our next meeting. Great. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Zach、um, will bring cookies. That's what Zach will bring cookies next time. <laughs> Zach's up. Zach's up. <laughs> we should start a rotation. Yes. Hey, Zach, you're starting. <laughs> Sorry, this way. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so next item on our agenda is to approve the minutes because we'll be so up to date.、Yes. Right? I know. This. Huh? this doesn't get any better. So, everybody got an email. Does anybody need to see a visual? No. no. Nope. Nope. Everybody already got、yep. any edits.、Um, so, I will. Basically, we approved a lot of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Our minutes were just nothing but a minute of approvals.、Um, so, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes as presented. A second. Of, of July 31st? Of July 31st.、Okay. And who second? Crystal? Any <coughs> discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We are officially caught up on minutes. <laughs> okay. All right.、Um, I don't know if we have any open items. We didn't really plan on any. Anything you want to? I have nothing for you, but looking forward to working with you. Excellent. Thank、Before、you. I was just going to say, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to be part of this、mm -hmm. meeting. I think that's an extremely important role, and I、uh, want to say thank you. I think that the Finance Committee's role is very important, and you'll see me at every meeting. Thank you. That's thank you. wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> 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 We appreciate it, absolutely. Um, excellent. Well, then I think what we'll do is I don't think we'll set a next meeting date quite yet.、Um, let's get the new members、mm -hmm. on board.、Um,
then we can have some discussion and we can then plan on our next meeting. I mean, I'm Do thinking. time schedule at the summer meeting near. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Brian and I can connect and then we can probably get something early October, I'm thinking, okay. at the latest. Awesome. So we can do that. Um, so TBD on next meeting. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any other open items to discuss? No? Otherwise, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. I second that. Uh, any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon.